welcome back to Beyond the Veil Tarot and Astrology. My name is Candice Marie. Thanks for joining me. I'll be your astrologer this week, and this is going to be the astral weather for the week of September 15th through the 22nd, 2024. Uh, please make sure if you guys like this content, you give me a thumbs up and leave me a comment below. Let me know how you're feeling with the astrology weather this week, and make sure you click that bell button and subscribe to the channel. Um, it's especially this week, because we have a lot going on. I'm here every Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and Sunday trying to make sense of what's going on in the cosmos. I incorporate tarot as well as the Sabian symbols and Western astrology, so it's kind of like a triple threat. Um, and boy, oh boy, we have a lot going on this week. Um, so first of all, happy Sunday. I hope you guys are doing well. I hope you guys are enjoying the amazing astrology that's taking place today because today is extra, extra sweet. Um, the themes for this week are just like out of the park. So I'm going to give you guys a brief synopsis of what the astrology is going to look like. Um, then we're going to take this day by day and we're going to take a look at what's going on with the transits, including the moon, so we know how to better be prepared for the week ahead. Um, but obviously, I'm going to be really paying special attention to the aspect of the week, which will be Mars and Cancer square the nodes of the moon. Now, I do cover this in my monthly horoscopes for September. Um, I also talk about the eclipse and all that stuff. Tons of content on the channel for some of the things going on this week. So make sure that you, uh, you know, take a listen to those, especially the Eclipse webinar that is live on my website. It's on sale right now. It's over three hours of content where I discuss both the lunar eclipse in Pisces taking place on the 17th of September, as well as the solar eclipse in Libra that'll be taking place next month on the 2nd. Um, but yeah, welcome to Eclipse Week. <laughs> For some of you guys, you're like, I'm already feeling it, um, especially if you have any personal placements in Pisces. So Pisces, sun, moon, risings. Um, anything around that kind of 24 to 26 degrees, it's going to be bang on some of your personal placements. So you just might want to be aware of that. But this is eclipse week. So um, this is going to be a sneak peek eclipse. At least that's what I'm calling it because it's close enough to the uh, incoming nodal change. So we will see in January of 2025, the north node moves into Pisces, the south node moves into Virgo. So this eclipse is kind of peeling back the curtain a little bit and giving us a bit of a peek at what we're going to be dealing with with these eclipse cycles for the better part of the next two years. Um, it's going to have us all in our feels, right? Pisces is a mutable water sign. It's the 12th sign of the zodiac, so it is about completions, conclusions, and we're going to see that moon in between Saturn, Lord of Karma, and Neptune. Uh, which I don't know what Neptune's going to do. I don't know if there's going to be a grand reveal or if this is going to be more about opening up spiritually and being a little bit more sensitive and uh, maybe romantic and creative or just downright crazy. Um, so it's kind of hard to predict eclipses. This is when things are changing and there's always a bit of a curveball because something is eclipsed and we can't see everything. But a lunar eclipse is like a full moon on steroids. So we'll be seeing that come in on uh, Tuesday. And it's just, yeah, it's, it's going to be an interesting week. Um, we're also going to see, and this is kind of a part of the eclipse, although you're going to see this kind of taking place Sunday into Monday. Um, we have some very important Mars aspects that you do not want to miss. Mars square, the uh, nodes of the moon is going to be a big one, especially considering Mars rules uh, the North Node in Aries. So that opening kind of square that's taking place to the nodes does represent a need to go a little bit deeper when it comes to our emotions, but it can also rattle us up a little bit, um, incentivize us through our emotions to kind of take some kind of action or leap into a change in our private or emotional lives. So that's a big one. Now I'm anticipating with the eclipse energy and also some of the oppositions we're gonna start seeing to Neptune, strange and mysterious things are gonna start taking place this week. Things like disappearances or stuff going missing, fog or um, often like vague situations and uh, they're all on deck this week. Um, also we're gonna see some mutable squares taking place with Jupiter and Gemini. So be cautious throughout this next week. It's really important to know that scams are very real. They are out there. This can be job scams, financial scams, things revolving around healthcare and a lot of stuff that can be kind of sketchy. So 
Use your third eye, practice critical thinking skills. If you're not sure, sleep on it and wait for some of these energies to shake out a little bit. Now, in terms of travel and uh, also storm warnings, if you hear anything like this, if there's anything that comes up, if you happen to be in an airport or maybe you're traveling, especially traveling by car, because we're gonna see this eclipse square Jupiter in Gemini, that's vehicles, this is traveling on foot or on bicycles. Um, if there's anything where you're like, you know, I'm, I should just get out of town now, maybe I'll beat the storm, be very careful because I do think that um, we're gonna see some major storms taking place over the next week, maybe two weeks. But this is an eclipse that's setting up for the better part of the next several months. So um, it's not, you know, just this particular week. I'm just looking at some of the squares. I am anticipating we're gonna have some travel delays and we're gonna have some issues with storms and possibly even flooding. So if you're in some of those areas, really pay attention to some of the warnings and uh, definitely heed them. We're gonna see a handful of 29 degrees this week. Um, so this is you know, a critical degree, it's a final degree. It does represent a lot of drama or needing to kind of really push to move through some things. So um, yeah, we've got some major finales taking place with all these 29s that are gonna be setting up and I'll show you guys when that's happening. Later in the week, we're gonna see the sun go into Libra. So this is going to be, uh, you know, technically, at least in the, here in the Northern Hemisphere, this will be the first day of fall. Um, and that's gonna be known as the equinox. So we're gonna see things start to kind of balance out as we're going into Libra season. Um, a little bit of a bittersweet chart, you know, astrologers like to look at that chart and we will use that to kind of see and assess how the, the next season is going to go until the second half of December of 2024. Um, very bittersweet with some of the aspects. We've got some things working in the favor between the luminaries, and then we also see the ruler that's in some uh, challenging kind of placements. Um, in regards to that, what I'm really talking about is Venus moving to the late degrees of Libra, coming into a square with Pluto in Capricorn. So it's really obvious that all is fair in love and war uh, with that particular square. And we could definitely see some pressure in relationships, commitments, partnerships, and some power struggles when it comes to love and money. And then finally, to top it all off, at the end of the week, Venus moves into the sign of Scorpio. <laughs> Woof, uh, quite the week. So we've got a lot of stuff kind of going on. Um, like I said, we're gonna take it through day by day. Um, if you guys want more in-depth, check out those horoscopes. But at the end of this video, I will take you through the 12 rising signs and touch on where Mars is moving through your chart where you might feel a little triggered, right? I think that's a, that's a good word for Mars and Cancer triggered. Uh, and some stuff might kind of get stirred up a little bit, right? So um, listen for that so you can kind of get an idea of where that action is gonna be taking place round about the time of the eclipse. But I think you guys are already feeling it as of this morning. So let's take a look at the week ahead. We're gonna start with Sunday the 15th. Uh, like I said last week, beautiful day. I hope you guys are having lots of fun. I hope it's extra sweet. Uh, we wake up this morning and the moon is in Aquarius. So we're feeling like partying, socializing, connecting, being with friends, all that fun stuff. This, like I said, is the best day to connect with other people, uh, go to gatherings. It can be really beneficial also because we're seeing this moon come into a trine with Venus. So it's enriching relationships and pleasure and partnerships and socializing. And simultaneously, we are seeing a trine to Jupiter. So we've got a grand air trine since late last night uh, into this morning. Venus and Jupiter are in a trine. And you guys know that I said it was going to be so amazing for kind of expanding our horizons and relationships, you know, really improving communication, meeting new people, um, improving existing relationships. Like... This day is a nice little slice of heaven before we get to what can be some of the more turbulent transits that are gonna be coming up this week. So let yourself have a Sunday where you can have a good time and relax, indulge, uh, unwind, and uh, be amongst uh, good friends and, and family. I think that's really how I would spend Sunday. Um, what you're going to see is that, you know, the lunar transits with Mars and Cancer are very important because the Mars transit is going to be feeding off of whatever's going on with the moon. So even though we're coming into, you know, Mars square, the north and the south node, where we feel some kind of pressure going on in the cancer area of our life, 
it's being um, it's being lifted up with the trines from Venus and Jupiter. It's kind of like, you know what, if you're having some trouble in the home front, call a friend, you know, ask a partner for help. Maybe it's about uh, reaching out and improving communication and allowing that to be the opportunity to kind of help build and grow relationships. So there is a way out of some of the frustration, um, but that exact aspect is gonna be taking place later tonight on Sunday. And uh, most of the day is just like chef's kiss astrology. So there's, there's really not much that I can complain about. What you will notice is later on Sunday, the moon is going to start coming into a square and in an, a quincunx. So right around the time we're getting into the evening hours, this moon in Aquarius starts quincunxing the sun. And obviously with the sun and Mercury and Virgo, we're like, okay, you know, I have a list of things I need to do. I got to walk the dog. I got to do laundry. I got to, you know, prepare or meal plan, like clean up the house. It's about being productive. And the moon, when it's in Aquarius, it just wants to have a good time. It wants to go out and do things and it wants to kind of put some of that stuff by the wayside. So there can be this sense of being like, which way do I go? And feeling a little bit of friction or maybe you feel like you didn't get much done all day. So that's kind of coming up for you at the end of uh, Sunday evening. Um, so you'll start to feel that happening in the early uh, PM hours. And then um, as we get into the later evening, the moon is then going to start to square Uranus, which is interesting because Uranus rules Aquarius. So um, obviously we know that Aquarius is about, uh, you know, connections, networks, the internet. It can be about humanitarian things, stuff that's kind of going on with, with the masses. And um, this is where we're at emotionally, right? We've all been kind of like on this sugar high or this kind of buzz all day. And then, uh, you know, the moon starts squaring Uranus and then we realize like, oh, I spent how much, you know, going shopping today or I, I ate, you know, that much candy or I indulged that much. Um, and so there can be some uh, friction and a little bit of like conflict that's kind of going on um, and trying to reconcile, you know, what we went out and did and what we could actually afford. Um, will that affect everybody that way? Not necessarily, but just be mindful that we kind of come to our senses a little bit as we get to the, uh, the end of Sunday. Um, then what you're going to start seeing is the square. Okay. So right around the time the moon is squaring Uranus, where there is some kind of emotional shift, breakdown, you know, shock, surprise, the moon, excuse me, the, the, the Mars transit in, can in Cancer is squaring the north and south node. Um, so it looks like that's going to come in right around, uh, I'm central time. So it's going to be right around like nine o'clock, nine fifteen central time. So that'll be around seven o'clock Pacific, uh, 10 o'clock Eastern. So there's a little bit of turbulence going on here between that square and also that square. Now, uh, when planets square the nodes, right? Um, it basically means from an evolutionary perspective, we're needing to integrate the effects and the um, kind of lessons of that particular planet. And squares aren't necessarily easy because it's kind of like cause and effect, right? So there is something that's going on that's putting pressure on us outside of us that's causing us to kind of, in Mars's case, leap into action. Cancer is a water sign though. It's not always physical, it's emotional. It can be about tears. It can be about passive aggressiveness. It could be about things that we've been holding on to that uh, we've been kind of harboring or emotions that we've kind of compartmentalized and we haven't dealt with. And then the pressure comes in from the square and then it pops off. So, um, you know, I think about Mars square the nodes needing to integrate more of that Mars energy. Well, I mean, Mars rules the North Node in Aries. So with the North Node in Aries, at least to the beginning of next year, there's this theme that's like, we need to be more independent. We need to be more fierce. We need to be more entrepreneurial or know how to be self-sufficient. Um, sometimes, yeah, North Node in Aries, we get heated, right? There can be conflicts. There can be, I mean, like global conflicts. This is the sign that deals with war. Um, so Mars squaring the North and the South Node out in the world is just prepped and primed for there being some kind of conflict. And Cancer can be revolving around home. It can be revolving around land. Um, it can be revolving around home countries. You know, how people are reacting. They can be reacting very defensively in regards to their home or their security. So there's like a little bit of like being on edge in that department. And remember the moon 
Um, you know, in Aquarius, this is where we're all at emotionally. So, you know, Sunday night, as the moon starts squaring Uranus, there can be some things that are coming up that are shocking and surprising. And people are like getting angry or they're getting upset um, about some kind of information or news that's potentially breaking. Um, Mars and Cancer. So this is the planet of action and desire and aggression being put in the sign that is associated with the moon. Um, nurturing, emotional security, you know, the home, all of that stuff is the, is the themes revolving around Cancer. So this placement can sometimes manifest as like a strong drive, like I said, to protect your environment, your home, your emotional environment, or to act from a place of deep emotional need rather than aggression. So when we see the square happening to the north node in Aries, this is an opening square. If you guys remember, Mars went through Aries and there was a bunch of stuff that was going on with the conjunctions earlier this year. Um, this is really the path that points to self-assertion. And this is also about you know, taking initiative. So when Mars squares this particular point, there's this urge to act independently um, and to forge ahead with your personal desires. But there's something that feels at odds with the Cancerian need for emotional security. So you're pushing yourself towards confronting your fears, relating to self-assertion. Possibly it could lead to situations where you must choose between personal comfort and taking bold steps into some new progressive future. And then we have the square to the south node in Libra, which is basically dealing with past life karma, you know, tendencies towards balance, partnerships, and over-reliance on others. Sometimes the need for validation or helping with decision making. Um, so Mars square this point is basically saying that there's gonna be conflicts that are gonna come up or past patterns um, or trying to kind of seek, you know, harmony can come up. Uh, we might notice that we're avoiding confrontation because we don't wanna have problems. We don't wanna kind of kick up the past. Um, and it can manifest as internal external conflicts where you're forced to stand up for yourself even if it disrupts the harmony, <laughs> right? So it's like you're kind of feeling with squares, you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't. And, and the, the theme here is the actions and how you respond to things on Sunday and Monday is really gonna determine are you moving into the future or are you going into the past? Are you gonna repeat some of the past habits, right? And when I think about Mars and Cancer Square, South Node and Libra, I think about how there can be this tendency of being like, well, you know, I don't wanna cause issues or problems in a relationship, you know, because it's gonna disrupt the home base, or I don't wanna confront my roommate, or, you know, I don't wanna tell my, <laughs> my step parent off, or, you know, I don't wanna go over there because there's gonna be a problem. And so there can be this tendency of being like, okay, we're not taking action, but we're still, um, yeah, we're still kind of um, holding on to some of those emotions and feelings, and like it, it can be like festering in a way. So, Obviously, squares to the nodes from an evolutionary perspective, um, it does represent challenges you know, to grow, that we have to encounter some bumps along the road in order to learn how to evolve into where we're going. So you know, this transit, it's a period where you're pushed to like reconcile your need for emotional security, Mars and Cancer, with this push towards being more direct, you know, center kind of action, um, you know, North Node and Aries, and it's about asserting yourself without losing the capacity for empathy and care, which Cancer naturally embodies. Karmic stuff happens when planets square the nodes. I always tell people like that's when you have a little bit more free will. So the, how you respond and how you assert yourself and what actions you take or what you initiate is definitely going to be a very big theme. Um, you know, this I think is a, a lesson in not over relying on others for balance or validation. And Mars here is bringing situations where you're forced to act more independently and it's teaching you that true balance comes from within not just relationships and also not just your home or living situation or family. Now with squares, we learn how to integrate energies. So we're kind of meeting in the middle and trying to be able to harmonize and blend the two energies together. So yes, we're being assertive, but we're not necessarily being aggressive. Um, and I think also this is about, for some of us, what can be coming up is like we're doubting whether or not we are, you know, capable of something or we're doubting whether or not we can balance two different sides of our life. Um, and I think it's about finding a new way to honor your emotional needs with Mars and Cancer while also simultaneously pushing towards some of your personal growth and, you know, your needs for independence. Um, yes, there can be conflict, right? When, whenever you talk about a Mars transit or when Mars is in a hard angle or when you see two planets square each other, the North and South node aren't planets, but they kind of act like that. 
we see some, some tension that kind of comes up. So there is going to be Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, which will be the eclipse, there is this increased potential for conflict, especially where personal desires are clashing with relational expectations or past patterns. Um, so, you know, these particular opportunities that are coming up are for growth. And I think that um, if we can move through this and we can look at, at some of the conflict as the need to kind of come up so we learn a lesson, maybe we clear the air, we finally cut something off or we initiate or we start something, um, we're growing and it's pushing us towards a much more authentic sense of, I think, self-expression. Emotional transformation, right? Mars doesn't always do well in water signs, um, at least it doesn't in, in Cancer and Pisces, but as it's going through this sign, um, you know, it, it's signifying a deep emotional transformation that's taking place. And I know that also because we're going to see a Mars retrograde that's gonna happen um, at the end of this year where Mars is gonna backtrack back into Cancer. So we're not in the shadow yet, but we're gonna start to see that stuff coming up that we're reworking some of our emotional reactions or what we've been working on when it comes to our own emotional needs or our home. So yeah, you're going to see significant changes in how you uh, nurture yourself, nurture other people. And this is about learning that part of, uh, you know, being self-sufficient or independent. It's not just about the actual action that you see out in the real world, like fire. It's going to be more about the emotional uh, shifts that you're doing and where you're actually cleaning up your act emotionally and taking responsibility for some of your reactions and behaviors. Throughout the Mars transit, we'll see some trines to Saturn and Neptune, which can be really helpful for creating emotional boundaries, for sticking to our goals, for making commitments to be you know, better mentally and emotionally. Um, and also some aspects to Neptune, which can help us be a little bit more compassionate, not just to other people, but also with ourselves. Um, so yeah, there is definitely this feeling of something brewing or something kind of coming up where you want to look at the cancer area of your life and you want to go, okay, you know, I'm either going to have some kind of, you know, emotion come up, there's going to be a blow up, there's going to be a conflict, there's going to be this feeling emotionally where I'm really incentivized to leap into action and to start something. It really depends on your needle placements. Um, I do think that obviously the Mars, you know, ruled charts are going to feel this a little bit more. So my Aries and my Scorpio risings, you guys really want to pay attention to where this is taking place. Um, but also cancer placements. If you have any cancer placements, you know, five, six, seven degrees, you're going to be feeling this as well. So that's pretty much Sunday in a nutshell. Things don't get a little heated or tense until later in the evening. And uh, then this takes us into Monday the 16th. And when we're up early in the morning, we see that the moon has now shifted into Pisces. So at this point, you know, as it's going through Aquarius and then it's coming into Pisces, we're coming into the eclipse energy. So you don't need to wait till the 17th for an eclipse to happen. Some of you guys have been already having your eclipsey things this past week. Some of you guys will see this unfold two weeks from now when we have another eclipse or six months from now when we have some uh, you know, reactivations with retrogrades that will activate the Pisces eclipse. Um, I've said several times and I'll keep saying it, this eclipse has legs, okay? It is going to, you're gonna see, some of you guys I don't think will quite realize the effects of the eclipse until six months from now and then you're gonna be like, oh my God, you know, suddenly it's just gonna hit you. So do not underestimate this eclipse. Um, it's in a new sign, right? It's lunar, so it means it's more emotional. It's not as obvious as an action-packed as the solar eclipse. And it's involving the North Node, which will eventually move into Pisces, and Saturn and Neptune are retrograde. So it's like, yes, we're gonna see some stuff break down. We're gonna see some stuff complete, but we won't really know the true effects of it, I'm anticipating, until Sag season of 2024, and then uh, March going into April of 2025. Um, so this one might kind of might take you guys for a bit of a loop. Anyway, moons in Pisces. When moons in Pisces, we're looking at Jupiter or we're looking at Neptune. Neptune's not going anywhere. It's still retrograde. Um, and Jupiter is just hanging out in Gemini. Obviously, we know that, um, you know, Jupiter in this sign is a little bit debilitated because it's juggling a little bit more than it can handle. News information comes fast, uh, sudden changes in regards to data or uh, travel, cars, vehicles, communications with people. And Jupiter is going to be the focal point um, of this particular square because not only is it the traditional ruler of Pisces, but it will be squaring this eclipse, which is going to make it so, so much bigger. So when the moon is in Pisces, we're a lot more sensitive. Uh, we're a lot more, I think, 
um, either tapped into our spiritual sense where we know that we need to maybe rest and reflect a little bit. Um, meditation, 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 guys. Pisces 12th house energy is about consciously saying, okay, I'm going to go and, and reflect. I'm going to be in nature. I'm going to take a bath. I'm going to take a walk along the beach or by water. I'm going to go to church. I'm going to go to temple, whatever it is where you go to your private sacred space. That's what this is about because we're able to make that kind of connection to something higher than us, right? So um, this is some stuff that you're going to want to integrate throughout this next uh, week to kind of help you cope with some of the eclipse energies. For some of you guys, you just might be like, I'm so tired, you know, and give yourself some extra sleep. Go to bed early. Some of you guys are going to be feeling uh, the, the heaviness of the full moon, um, not only because it's an eclipse, but it's going to be conjunct Saturn, which limits and Neptune, which dissolves things. Um, there's also, you know, a need to really kind of talk about the fact that, uh, mental health is going to be a huge theme connected to Pisces. You know, we've had Saturn in Pisces for over the last year. Neptune's been there for years. So we're approaching the Saturn Neptune connection. That's going to be happening in 2025 and 2026. Um, but when planets are in the late degrees of Pisces, we see more mental health issues. We see more issues with drinking and driving. We see more issues with people, um, having, extreme feelings of, of separation, isolation, um, you know, wanting to just kind of wrap something up or complete something. I, I have noticed, I've been watching this for the last year now, when the moon's going through Pisces, we see an uptick in people who are feeling suicidal or people who are just feeling horribly uh, depressed. Um, and I attribute a lot of that more to Saturn than I do Neptune. But Nevertheless, if you're feeling that way, if you know somebody who's feeling that way, you know, you know, during these particular cycles, take it very seriously, you know, get in touch with somebody who can give you some feedback, who can be there for you. Um, Pisces can also be about helping others in need. So if you happen to be on the other side of the spectrum and you're like, I'm fine, I'm seeing everybody else crumbling, we're going to pick up some of the energies because it's a full moon. So it's pulling the energies also of the sun in Virgo and Mercury being in Virgo of people wanting to leap into action and helping other people. So when I think of Pisces, I think of uh, people who are homeless, people who are in need, that don't have shelter, don't have food, don't have resources. Um, and uh, we're going to see both sides of this axis that's going to kind of get lit up. Thankfully, on Monday, Monday is a very quiet day. We're not really going to see much going on. It's almost like eerily quiet for me. It feels like the calm before the storm, to be really honest with you, where Sunday we were riding high Monday. It's kind of like, okay, why do I feel like something is off? That's at least the vibe that I get. The moon's not really doing anything. The real, uh, only aspect we're going to see is the moon going through Pisces coming into a trine with Mars. Pretty much. That's it. It will quincunx the, uh, South node. So you're going to see that somewhere around uh, the mid-afternoon, but that's not like a significant aspect. Um, we've got the quincunx to the south node where we're kind of like, okay, something's getting cleared out. It doesn't make sense. Why do I feel like there's something weird in a relationship going on? You know, why is somebody getting ghosty or not communicating well? Why haven't they responded? Why do I feel some distance? Um, I think a lot of people are going to be saying that stuff over the next month. As much as I hate to say it, where Pisces is isolation, all of these planets, quincunxing Venus, the South Node, and then we're going to see uh, planets going into Libra, hitting the South Node, and then we're going to have a South Node south solar eclipse. So there is this sense of recognizing and noticing uh, where there can be some really stark changes going on in relationships. And I don't just mean romantic. It could be with friends. It could be with family. It could be with coworkers. Um, it can be with clients. There can also be this sense of being like, you know what? I'm feeling a little overwhelmed by people, right? South node in Libra. And that energy of the eclipse in Pisces is encouraging everybody to get real about their emotional boundaries and about where other people are energetically sucking you dry or where you're in an environment or you're in a household or you're working in a job where you're around people that can, that can seem a little unhinged or around people who like to play the victim or people who thrive maybe, you know, Saturn and Neptune on, you know, uh, despair and sadness or fear or paranoia, right? So much about the Mars uh, and Cancer transit is about protecting your emotional space. 
and then you throw an eclipse there with Saturn and the moon. So what I like on uh, Monday, because this is a, a brief day where you're not gonna see a lot going on and you're gonna be able to catch your breath, I like this day to just unwind a little bit. Yes, it's a Monday, I know some of you guys gotta work, but this can also be a day as you're prepping to come into the eclipse as the moon is trying Saturn, like, I mean, excuse me, as the moon is trying Mars, this is the day where, at least for me, I would be like, okay, it's right before the eclipse. I'm gonna go put some salt out in front of my house. I'm gonna go and clean all the floors and sage the place. There is a lot of funky energy when we have eclipses. There is a lot of stuff that feeds, I believe, on our energy and Pisces is what's invisible and it's the unknown, it's the ethers. So I do think that we're gonna see a lot more strange and suspicious happenings, paranormal activity. We might notice that there is also just people who are just not handling the vibes very well because Pisces is something that we cannot really comprehend. Um, so there's gonna be a lot of people that are, I think, emotionally gonna be a little unhinged. And this is a time where the awareness that that is out there is everything. If you are grounding before you get in your car and you go to work on the freeway, you're gonna be all that much more protected. If you are making a conscious effort to say, you know what, I don't want certain energies in my home, or you know, I am really focusing on, you know, doing an auric field check before I grab my keys or my purse and I go anywhere, or you know, maybe you're gonna be better about using your essential oils or your sprays or putting your crystals on before you go places. As silly as this stuff sounds, Pisces is the ritual. And uh, I think that this would be really beneficial for a lot of people, especially if you're somebody like me, if you're watching my content, you're probably somebody who is at least a little bit more sensitive or maybe you identify as being an empath. Um, it's gonna be real out there. So maybe if you're going to the store uh, this week or even on Sunday, like pick up a, pick up a big bag of sea salt because you're, you're gonna need it during this eclipse season. All right, so um, not much else is gonna happen on, on uh, Monday with the moon we're gonna see it continue to move through Pisces. And it looks like in the uh, PM hours, the moon is starting to oppose Mercury. So for most of us, at least here uh, in the States or in the Northern Hemisphere, um, we're, we're, not, we're not feeling the effects of this during the daytime. Now, if you're over in Europe and you know, you're in other parts of the world, you will be experiencing this during the daytime and you're gonna have communication issues that is baked into the eclipse though. So I don't think it's limited to just happening first thing in the morning on the 17th. But if you notice the first aspect the moon makes as it's coming into the eclipse, which will be around 25 degrees, okay, is it opposes Mercury. So I'm sitting around going like, is there gonna be some major communication outage on the 17th? Like I've thought this for a while looking at this eclipse, but that's the first aspect it's gonna make. Moon in opposition to Mercury. Well. Uh, Mercury is the dispositor for Jupiter, so this could be impacting cell phones, communication, travel, uh, some major outage of a, of a uh, social media platform, you know, and then Jupiter is also the dispositor for Pisces. So it's also coming into conjunction with Saturn squaring Jupiter, so it's saying the same thing. So the first aspect of the eclipse, first thing in the morning before it even hits is, okay, we're having difficulties communicating. And I'm gonna tell you guys right now, I love my Pisces. I love you guys, I have a lot of Pisces in my life. But this feels like clown show. We've got Sun and Mercury in Virgo that's like, give me the data, give me the information, you know, give me the schedule, let's get it on time, let's get everything in order. And then we've got the moon that's going through Pisces and it's like, what order, what are you talking about? Like, it's not even speaking the same language. Um, and the moon is asleep, emotional, reactionary, it's avoidant, it's hiding, maybe it's even a little passive aggressive, and it's not able to communicate with Mercury. And then it comes into conjunction with Saturn. So this is gonna be very early morning on the 17th. Okay, so moon conjunct Saturn. Um, out of 15, all right? So 15 is a Gemini degree. Cars, communications, cell phones, cell phone towers, social media apps coming into a square Jupiter. So that's gonna be around uh, 5 a.m. Uh, Central Time. So we're looking at closer to 3 a.m. Pacific, 6 a.m. on the East Coast. We might be waking up being like, what the heck's going on? Something's not working or, oh my God, Instagram's down. Everybody freaks out when that happens. I don't know why. Uh, but that, that may be something that happens. And then we see with the moon conjunct Saturn, 
we feel that hardening of the inability to communicate and connect, right? There is a, there is a difficulty in being able to express our feelings and being able to connect to other people. So then we start to see the moon separate from Saturn, which is when most people are going to be getting up. And when the moon starts separating from Saturn, then it's going to be between Saturn and Neptune where it will inevitably have that eclipse. So we've got a full moon eclipse in Pisces, conjunct Saturn, opposed Mercury and Virgo. Challenges in deciphering facts, truth, feeling blocked or delayed in some way, communication or travel issues, some major weather event this week, which I think will roll for the next couple of weeks as we come out of the eclipses. Emotional endings, completions, feeling trapped or burdensome by Saturn. Neptune conjunction feels otherworldly, emotional, maybe tapped in. We have to stay focused on staying grounded because I feel like you're going to see people either go towards the Saturn. Oh my God, what are we going to do? Everything. It's the end of the world, you know? or we're experiencing this limitation or this hardship, and then Neptune is gonna be like people who are gonna be reaching for the bottle, they're gonna be drinking, drugging, they want to release some of these emotions because they don't know how to cope with what's happening. All of this is squaring Jupiter, which makes it feel bigger. And Mercury is in opposition to Saturn. Like guys, if people aren't calling you back this week, if people aren't responding to emails or text messages, I'm not saying it's okay, but you're going to have a bunch of people who are going to be doing the Pisces thing where they're going to be wigging out and going, oh my God, what's happening? And then you're going to have the Virgo kind of group of people, not necessarily the signs, but the way that people are responding. And they're going to be like, this is, this does not make sense. Whatever you're spinning out about or whatever information is coming out, people are going to be very critical um, of the news, the information, the media, the data, right? Now the eclipse is going to be at 25 degrees. So let's look at that. And uh, that eclipse will come in, depending on where you are, it looks like it's around uh, 7.30 Pacific, 9.30, East, 9.30 Central, 10.30 Eastern. So yeah, I mean, you know, it's a, it's a full moon lunar eclipse. So if you guys wanna do your uh, ritual stuff, I always am quick to tell people that eclipses are very different energies, okay? Extremely different energies than a typical full moon. And because the moon is conjunct Saturn and Neptune, which in my case, that's, they're kind of trapped. So to me, it seems like at least Saturn being a malefic and Neptune is kind of up in the air there. This is not my favorite time to do anything. If you're going to do something, ideally you're doing it on Monday, the 16th. When you're seeing the moon trine Saturn and you're like, yes, I'm going to, you know, take my cleansing bath and light my candles. Like, I know it's not the eclipse, but I would not be doing anything under this eclipse. Why? Because you can't see anything. You can't see anything. Unless you're saying, well, I'm going to blend some oils, right? That could be very Pisces, Neptune. Um, I'm going to be, you know, just relaxing, meditating, listening to music. That's fine. But like actually setting intentions and doing stuff, mm, not so crazy about this one personally. Um, we're going to see that this eclipse is at 25. That's an Aries degree. Okay. So Aries degrees always deal with, um, initiating. It could be about conflict. It could be about things revolving around military, it's going to be about something that uh, we initiate or something that happens fast, which is so interesting because we just saw Mars square the nodes, which is still a part of this particular eclipse. It's still hanging out there. I'll tell you what this says. Uh, so when I look at 20, when I look at 25 degrees, okay, so if you follow degree uh, theory, 1, 13, and 25 are all Aries degrees. Uh, to construct, build, construction workers, builders, to produce production, a factory, a workshop, soldiers, army, uniforms, weapons, rifles, bullets, military barracks, shooting, shooting range. At an angle, at the corner, engineers, machines, tools, something sharp, nail, knife, needles. To be brave, hardworking, industrious, always uh, active, enthusiastic. Head, top of the nose, blood, or to bleed. Red color, flame, matchstick, lighter, fire, fireman. Physical injuries, cuts, wounds, to lose blood, to fight, sheep, Germany, things that are hot or spicy, sports, sports stars, um, and to be the leader, to be the first. Now, it's kind of like, 
kind of weird, right? Because you've got like a Aries degree happening in Pisces. But I feel like this is about people who feel like they've been fighting the good fight. And whether that's like in your own life or in your own situation, wherever Pisces is, you're kind of like, I'm tired. I'm exhausted. I'm emotionally exhausted, which I think people would feel anyway with the Pisces eclipse. But that being at Aries degree and it's conjunct Saturn and also Neptune, I feel like this is going to be something in the eclipse that's going to come up about somebody who was first to get on a story because this is connected to journalists, right? And it's squaring Jupiter, which is about journalists. So a journalist who got a document or they got a story or they got some inside scoop on something and like they were the first person to get the story and then somebody's trying to shut it down or somebody's trying to hide it or they're trying to cover it up. And then we hear something about, you know, something either, God forbid, happening to that uh, journalist or that person or somebody who was going to release something or we find out that, you know, they have the information and they hit it and now they're coming out with it. Something like that. Because I think this is definitely going to be about some, some really significant news, something that's being exposed, that there is a, th a thwarted intention to try to stop from that coming out. And it's about the bravery of somebody trying to talk about it. That's my thought. Um, but yeah, the squares to Jupiter makes everything feel big, big ideas, big communication, big news. And the eclipse will be felt until really, until the moon goes into Aries. So it's happening on Tuesday night, but it's going to be hanging around until the moon goes into Aries. So when we wake up on the 18th, you know, things are going to be a little different. That's when you're going to see the shift. Um, one thing that I'll say about Pisces energy is that, you know, we're going to feel a lot of emotional depth that's going to be coming up that we're not used to because we're kind of being immersed in an energy that's complete polar opposite than Aries. Aries, the last two years, has been direct, in your face, conflict, combat, aggression, hostility. And Pisces is, is none of that. Pisces is about increased empathy right? And yes, sometimes it can be passive. And yes, sometimes it can be that it's a little difficult, you know, getting the, getting clarity, but really this is about releasing. It's about empathy. It's about healing. It's about forgiveness. So I think that we're going to see an amplification of sensitivity and empathy. Um, and with this eclipse, we might find ourselves more attuned to the emotions of other people, or maybe feeling a profound connection or even like merging with the collective emotional field. So there can be some significant shift where we can be moving towards peace. An eclipse like this also, I think really close to Saturn and Neptune can bring some kind of spiritual insight. So there is this sense of having enhanced emotional or spiritual awareness. Um, and the eclipse can really lead to moments of, you know, a deeper connection with your beliefs. It can also be about... Um, having really significant dreams and they can be very symbolic or, um, you know, very vivid, um, and intuitive flashes or things that kind of come up for you when you're in meditation, which is why grounding your energy and taking that time to find some alone time or get quiet, I think is what's really necessary to move through some of these energies. Eclipses promise transformation, right? We have two of them generally that happen every six months. These are windows of opportunity where there are big changes. So we see things like people getting married, people relocating, quitting jobs. We see meeting significant partners and soulmates. We see people transition. I mean, big shocks and surprises happen. And this is the time where the, the lunations come and they shake everything out. And it's kind of preparing us for where we're going. And it doesn't always make sense until we get out of eclipse season. So keep in mind, we have this eclipse on Tuesday, and then two weeks later, beginning of October, we have another one. So things tend to happen in between the eclipses within that kind of time period. Um, one thing you need to know is that full moon lunar eclipses are about release, right? And Pisces is about healing. So this is going to be, I think, a really powerful catalyst for emotional healing, um, a time to let go of past emotional baggage, especially because it's a north node eclipse. It's a lunar eclipse completion. Um, and that could mean old wounds, patterns that no longer serve us, and the release can it be very intense, but ultimately I think it's very liberating. Some of us will be seeing transformation around relationships because this eclipse makes aspects to Venus, and then two weeks later we see a solar eclipse in Libra. So significant relationship changes can happen. You know, there can be a push towards more soulful connections, or there can be a sense of 
realizing that there is some illusions going on in relationships and that bonds are kind of breaking down and we might recognize that there are some relationships worth saving and other ones that are, were worth, you know, kind of cutting your losses. So this can definitely highlight the need for relationships and, you know, where we're at in relationships and also help us when it comes to unconditional love and understanding for those that we're closest to. I do think that so much of the Saturn-Neptune aspect of this eclipse is about, you know, really um, challenges revolving around illusions and, and not only that, confronting illusions. It's so hard to tell fact from fiction with Saturn and Neptune and Pisces. Jupiter magnifies that and everybody's got an opinion, you know, and everything seems like so uh, um, extreme or so polar opposite to each other. And I feel like because Pisces and Neptune rules over illusion and fantasy, on one hand, for artists, creatives, mystics, you know, people who maybe work in, uh, you know, spiritual fields or religious fields, it might be great. But for other people who aren't as attuned to this energy, it can be really challenging because the eclipse is quite literally for some people going to be forcing them to confront their own personal illusions and their own tendency to have escapist uh, mentality. And also it's going to be urging them to use a more grounded approach to life's realities while maintaining a connection to your dreams. So, you know, Saturn says, get real. And Neptune says like, it's all a dream. And so we feel trapped between these two things and we can't quite figure out what is what. And the reality is, is we're starting to realize some of us are so off <laughs> when it comes to our perspective of reality that um, some of the events and the things that come out and the things that shake out from this can be really shocking and surprising for some people and hard to kind of comprehend. Um, I do think that you want to watch for emotional overwhelm because, you know, full moons do bring lots of really big feelings. And I think that this one in particular, the squares to Jupiter, you know, tapping, going for walks, getting on the treadmill, um, doing EFT, the tapping technique, uh, breath work, uh, journaling, all of these kind of uh, mercurial things can help us move through some of the stuff that can come up for us emotionally. And yes, there are going to be some of us that are going to feel like we want to retreat, right? We want solitude. We want to engage in activities that soothe our, soothe our soul. So it could be things like art, music, uh, water-related activities. Pisces 12th house energy rules things like spas, um, so I think that we're going to see an uptick in people being like, you know what, that's it. I'm going and getting in the sauna or I'm going to go and soak in the hot tub or I'm taking a long bath or I'm going to, you know, go and get a, uh, a uh, membership at like a day spa. Um, can be really wonderful for a lot of people to kind of cleanse a lot of this stuff out, not hold on to it. Um, I do think that health and well-being is always a really big topic when we're looking at the axis of Pisces and Virgo. And so you know, I think there's going to be much more of an emphasis on or focus on holistic practices, you know, mental health, emotional well-being. And this can be a period where we are encouraged to adopt practices, like I said, meditation, yoga, therapy, even to manage some of these heightened emotions that are kind of coming up for us. I love hypnosis also with Saturn and Neptune in Pisces. I think that can be really wonderful for some people. Past life regression even can be something you can consider uh, to work through some stuff and kind of connect the dots and see how it's impacting you in this lifetime. Um, and yeah, I think that uh, there is definitely going to be much more of an emphasis on us needing to engage in better self-care, uh, focusing on, you know, reflecting and releasing things. And if that means we got to cry or get in touch with our emotions, or if that means we have to, you know, spend some time alone, like, so be it. Um, but you know, the Pisces eclipses, what they, the, what they've taught me, at least in the past, kind of reflecting on them is that we have to kind of embrace the flow. We have to go with the flow of what's happening. We can't try to understand it or change it or whatever. Like we don't want to go against the current. So rather than resisting change, if we're embracing the fluidity and kind of adaptability of Pisces, it, it can really lead to some really significant changes and profound personal growth and also emotional maturity, right? It's conjunct Saturn. We're going to see Mars trying Saturn pretty soon. So I think a lot of this is going to be relating to emotional securities and emotional boundaries. Um, things that I can recommend other than the spa or meditating or soaking uh, would be detoxing. Um, you know, sobriety is very Saturn, Neptune in Pisces. So some of you guys might go, that's it. You know, I'm not smoking anymore. I'm not drinking anymore. I'm going to quit smoking pot. I'm not going to rely on this medication. You know, I'm going to try to do it a different way. 
Um, obviously, you know, check in with your medical providers, but I think that that is one way to navigate this is like really deciding to go at it cold turkey and not using some of the substances or the things that maybe we use as a crutch. Um, and it's not limited to that, guys. It could be, you know, I'm limiting my screen time. I'm not going to be, you know, afraid of this anymore. Like, it, really, it's about um, challenging yourself to get outside of your comfort zone and not run and hide. And the squares from Jupiter is saying, in order to do that, you got to talk about it. You can't be afraid to talk about what you're struggling with. You can't be afraid to learn new habits. You can't be afraid to explore new things or new places. So it's trying to get us out of our comfort zone. Um, high vibe music, rest, you know, I think cleaning and protecting your space. Like I said, you, you can get a lot of, a lot, a lot of stuff done with just like a white candle and a, <laughs> a one pound bag of sea salt. I think that if you have that, you're, uh, you're set. Um, but if you guys want more on that, I did do a video on the eclipse already. And, uh, like I said, you guys can check out my, uh, webinar for the fall eclipses. And this is going to take us now into the 18th. So when we wake up in the morning, um, the moon is going to be in Aries. So technically, yes, we're out of the eclipse. Complete shift. Once the moon goes into Aries, it's very different than where it's been in Pisces the last couple days. This makes us feel like we want to take some kind of action. And so the moon is ruled by Mars and Mars is ruled by the moon. So we see some mutual reception here. And uh, unfortunately, with a fallen Mars and squares involving the nodes, I don't think it's a positive mutual reception. I think this is kind of like the fallout after the eclipse. And um, when the moon comes into Aries, first thing it's going to do is it's going to come into conjunction with the north node. All right. So let's look at that, which is a good transit. When, when the North Node and the Moon are in conjunction, it's like emotionally, we know what we have to do. We know what action we have to take. And it looks like that's kind of the afternoon. And we know what we need to do. We know what we need to get done. But we also know that it's going to be uncomfortable. And the Moon starts coming into a square with Mars. It's like, I know I need to move to a new apartment, but, you know, I don't want to have to move out of my parents' house or, you know, I don't want to have to you know, be independent or go and live on my own. You know, it's going to be different for everybody, but there is definitely some conflict kind of brewing where maybe we've sat with what we've been reevaluating um, for the last couple of days, you know, Monday through Wednesday, and then Thursday we wake up and we're like, I'm not hiding anymore. <laughs> now I'm going to do something about it. So the moon in Aries, it's very daring, it's independent, it's very uh, focused on action and also like, you know, being active, being athletic. Moon square Mars also, I think, I think the Mars and Cancer transit in general, we do see an uptick in like domestic violence issues and stuff like that. Um, so with the North Node Moon, we could see some people that are getting really angry and we're acting out. We could see a lot of like domestic issues, all right? You might be more prone to hearing your neighbors arguing upstairs or, you know, you get a call that your brother is having an argument with his wife or you're having some problem with when you're one of your roommates. That stuff can kind of happen and it's in the air. And I would just be mindful that people are going to be very emotionally reactionary um, and they're going to be feeling very defensive um, on, uh, on Thursday. Now, on top of that, uh, sorry, Wednesday, we're on Wednesday. On top of that, then we feel the actual squeeze, which will be coming in the afternoon. And when the moon comes into a square with Mars, this is going to be in the kind of early evening, late afternoon. It's going to square at an eight which is going to represent the need to make some kind of change. So we're changing the way that we respond to things emotionally. Yes, it creates a little bit of a stir in the other area of our life, but you know, with squares, you can't, you can't have two things at the same time. So the question is, is do you want to be going towards the future North node moon in Aries where you're brave and you're independent and you're assertive and you're taking charge of something, or do you want to be going towards the past? And I think with that Mars, uh, the moon square Mars and the Mars square, the south node, it's like people are going to get really crabby because they don't want to get out of their old habits and their old routines. You know, they, they don't want to make change. Uh, they want comfort. They want security. And they don't want to cause any problems. And I think that, yeah, Wednesday is the day where people are, people are going to be rocking the boat a little bit. Um, so the moon's going to continue to keep going through Aries. We're not going to see much else happen after that square. That'll take us into the PM hours. 
Um, and if I didn't say this, because I'm seeing it now, I think I'm pretty sure I did talk about Mercury in opposition to Saturn, but you know, the eclipse in the day after, so like the, the 17th and the 18th, Mercury is in opposition to Saturn. So that whole not getting called back from people, you know, not getting somebody to sign something, failing to get some kind of document in time, there being some issue with authority and like not getting clarity or direction, like that's pretty much like the 15th, 16th, 17th. So communication will not improve, I think, until we start seeing Mercury trying Uranus or Mercury, you know, trying Pluto. Um, so communication is still not great this week. All right, so now we're going to move into Thursday the 19th. And when we're up in the morning, the moon is still in Aries and there's some stuff going on here. So we're going to continue to see the moon move through Aries and it'll come into conjunction with Chiron. All right, so when it comes into conjunction with Chiron, there is some emotional wounding coming up. Uh, maybe we feel like, you know, we're the odd man out because of this connection to Mars. Maybe we feel like, you know, we're having to do what's best for us and it's disrupting relationships or disappointing other people or causing some issues revolving around family. Um, and that's in the air and the moon will continue to move through Aries and it'll oppose Venus. We've also got um, the sun is going to be in a trine with Uranus. So if you guys caught my horoscopes for September, I talk about this kind of like obstacle course. Uh, both the sun and Mercury will go through in Virgo that we will see a whole sequence of events where first planets will oppose Saturn, where we feel stretched and limited, which we're feeling um, the last couple weeks into this week, where there is some separation or taking a step back. And then we're gonna see planets trine Uranus, where we go, you know what, I'm gonna make a change. I'm gonna make a job change, a financial change, I'm gonna make a schedule change, a health change. And then we're going to see an opposition to Neptune where we realize that that thing that we thought was supporting us, we don't need it anymore, or it's not reliable, or it's not safe, or it's not legitimate. And then we see trines to Pluto where we go through some significant change. So we're going to see some Earth trines. So we're going to see that kind of obstacle course set up. And when the sun trines Uranus, you know, I like this day. This is about positive changes and adapting in physical health or financial ways. Uh, maybe we've been making some changes to our schedule. Maybe we've made some changes to our, our work or our workplace or, or our relationship to coworkers or our finances in some way. And this is at a 27. So it's going to be about changes in the way that we communicate and our kind of daily routines and habits. So that's a, you know, positive, unexpected change type of day. And then we're going to see um, later in the day, the moon will conjunct Chiron. So that's going to happen kind of like mid afternoon. And that's where there's room for squabbles, conflict, you know, there to be uh, a little bit of drama, because it's not just conjuncting the, um, the moon, the moon is also coming into an opposition with Venus, right? So in the PM hours, the moon will conjunct Chiron, where we feel kind of like the odd man out, or we're wounded, or we're dealing with some kind of personal issues or insecurity. And then as it starts to oppose the moon, starts to oppose Venus, then we're gonna see some relationship changes and like feelings of being separate or limited or uh, rejection themes in some capacity that's gonna be going on on Thursday night. So watch for that. Looks like that's gonna get picked up right around here. So it's gonna be in the later hours, but later in the evening is when you're gonna see this opposition and it's at a Taurus degree. So it's about feeling like money, resources, relationships, something tangible, physical is out of reach. And notice the moon's coming into a square with Pluto and Venus is coming into a square with Pluto. So this is gonna materialize as the power struggles that we're having revolving around control, support, you know, that's kind of bringing up issues in relationships and making people feel more isolated and not feeling like they're getting the need that they, they should be getting from other people. Um, so the last aspect the moon is going to make is that square. Looks like it was also a sextiling Jupiter. So we're feeling more optimistic about kind of communicating and speaking out. Uh, we do feel like we're having to make changes to our work or our schedule, or we're having to help other people in some way. And then the last aspect the moon is going to make will be a square to Pluto. And that's going to be really early in the morning on uh, Friday the 20th. Uh, but still, we're feeling that kind of Thursday evening. So there could be a little bit of tension going on in relationships. So just be mindful of that. 
Um, on the 20th, we wake up and the moon is going to be, so this is Friday, the moon's going to be in Taurus, completely different energy vibe. Um, when the moon's in Taurus, we're focusing a little bit more on pleasure and resources and stability. Yes, we can be more focused on tangible things like food and money. Um, but the moon is going to be a better place, I think, to kind of have for a couple of days, to be honest with you. Now, what you are going to notice is that when the moon is in Taurus, we're looking at Venus. And Venus had just recently come out of an opposition with uh, the moon. And now Venus is starting to come into a quincunx with Neptune where something is not so clear or we talk about that feeling of isolation or separation in relationships. And she's starting to come into a square with Pluto. So there can be uncomfortable situations going on um, you know, all around. And Venus is also quincunx Uranus. So when you think about it, there's a yacht here. Venus is the focal point between change and illusions and where people can kind of show us or relationships are showing us, you know, what we really need to see, who they really are. Um, so there can be some uncomfortable things going on in relationships. We can also see partnerships and values changes. And what you'll notice is in the PM hours, the moon in Taurus is going to start coming into a sextile with Mars. So this does help us feel a little bit more grounded, safe, secure, you know, taking action or taking stock in things within our home, our resources, that kind of stuff. Not much else is happening other than that. The only other big transit that you're going to see that's going to be happening on the 20th is the sun opposes Neptune. So we've already dealt with Venus in opposition to Neptune, right? When it was in Virgo, we've already uh, kind of seen um, also through the eclipse, the polarity between Pisces and Neptune, right? Because it's pretty close to that degree. So when the sun makes an opposition to Neptune, this is where I say you got to spot the scams. There can be some stuff that can happen where somebody pulls the wool over your eyes. Something vague, foggy, or something disappearing. Maybe changes revolving around power and leadership. Um, the sun represents leaders. It's men. It's father figures. This is people who have some kind of like, you know, authority in the world. And um, it can be a day where we find out that there is like a star, a celebrity, a man, um, a famous doctor, um, maybe somebody in the news who's like a leader of some kind that's ill or they're unwell and not being able to handle a task. And um, we can find out that, you know, they're, they're, they're dealing with some kind of like medical issues. And it could be old age because Saturn is there. It could be mental, emotional issues. It could be issues revolving around addiction. It's hard to say. Um, but while this opposition is happening, we're starting to see still with the sun trying your honest where there's sudden change and the impact that that has on financial situation and the trying to Pluto that whatever this is around the end of September, whoever's changing their status, if somebody's stepping down or they're passing the torch to somebody else in terms of running the country, running a business, uh, running an operation, it's going to have huge effects on personal power. This is like a this is like a strategic power play that of what's going on here around this this particular time, the end of the week. Um, be very careful. Watch for manipulations and scams, right? Because when the sun opposes Neptune, we don't see something so clearly, or we feel like disempowered, or we're trying to make sense of something we can't see very clearly. So it's not the best day to be like making financial transactions, to be accepting job, you know, uh, applications, uh, not applications, but like if somebody gives you an offer, it's like, well, is it too good to be true, you know? Or somebody's trying to sell you something and you're like, wow, it looks amazing. Um, this is like a catfish energy for me, especially with Venus, Quincunx, Neptune. Like not everything is what it seems. Like there's something, there's something off about this, at least in my opinion. Watch for flooding issues, healing challenges, problems with water in the home, emotions tied to home and family. We've also the same day got Mercury squaring Jupiter. So this is a big news day, right? It could be that day that's like, oh, so-and-so, you know, like, you know, was hospitalized for drinking and driving. And people are like, oh my God, I couldn't believe it was that celebrity. Or, you know, did you hear so-and-so stepped down and this person's now, you know, taking over. And it, whatever it is, it's going to be big news. Because Mercury square Jupiter at 20 is going to be about a change or some kind of shock or surprise or exposure of something, right? Scorpio degree. Um, so, you know, Jupiter and Mercury square, tall tales. I think about that. Even though Mercury is in its domicile, I think about telling tall tales because, you know, Jupiter is debilitated. 
um, you know, trying to put out all this information and it being like, oh my God, this thing is happening. And Mercury's like, is it though? Like, what are your sources? Uh, and it's trying to decipher and make sure that like, this is actually realistic what's being told. Um, we can be overconfident with our thoughts. We can have big ideas. There could be boastfulness, blowing things out of proportion, but the 20th is going to be a big news day. I'm anticipating for sure. And this is going to take us into Saturday, the 21st. And then on the 21st, the moon is still in Taurus. You got some nice aspects going on here. Um, you know, the moon's going to sextile Saturn. So we're feeling stable, reserved, like whatever we're envisioning, we're hoping to kind of build or create is possible. Mm -hmm. uh, we feel a little bit more so emotionally secure after kind of maybe getting shaken up throughout this last week. And, um, you know, we're going to see trines between the moon and Mercury. In Virgo. So this is great on Friday for organizing your finances, accounting, bookkeeping, uh, doing tax related things, things pertaining to, you know, organizing your workspace, uh, gardening, cooking, organizing your home space. And in the PM hours, we are going to see that the moon will come into conjunction with Uranus. But before that happens, pretty much all Friday morning, you'll have the moon sextile Saturn trying Mercury. So really until about mid afternoon, uh, that we've got some nice aspects. Simultaneously, we have got the sun at 29. So it's breaking out of the opposition with Neptune. where We weren't clear. It's starting now to trine the moon. So something is kind of syncing up in regards to our resources, our habits and our work, right? So we've got the sun trying Pluto. Look at this got a grand earth trine. Um, so sun trine Pluto, powerful transformations revolving around our habits, routines, our acts of service, and also uh, our, our reputation, career responsibility. This is that power change though that I saw, right? 29, 29. We're going to have a 29 here. Uh, it's just crazy. You know, even Venus is about to hit 29. And while that moon is in Taurus, we're starting to feel Venus square Pluto. All right, so let's take it ahead a little bit. So it looks like the moon is going to conjunct Uranus overnight. Okay, but watch what happens. So this is going to be Sunday the 22nd. And it's going to be obviously at like the crack of dawn. So I don't expect uh, everybody to see what happens. But look at this. 29 of Taurus. 29 of Virgo, 29 of Libra, 29 of Capricorn. This might as well be a 29. It's almost there. When planets hit 29, it's a critical tipping point. So that means in Taurus, Libra, Virgo, Capricorn, even Pisces, there's something that's completing. I don't know. To me, that seems very significant. What do you guys think? I think there's something there because this is a trine and I don't think most people are going to be up at 2 to 5 a.m. on a Sunday, but... Hey, if you are, it's going to be super productive. Um, but this tells me that there is something that's changing. And Venus is the ruler of the moon in square Pluto. There's some significant change in relationships, partnerships. There's going to be some major ally shift. There's going to be something like that that's going to happen. And I have personally favored when planets have gone through Libra and squared Pluto. I feel like it's played out a lot better than when stuff is in Aries or when stuff is in Cancer, because at least as planets are moving through Libra, there is a superior square. It's attacking Pluto, right? So I always like to like joke and be like, Pluto at 29 is like, you know, the shadow government of the deep state. It's the swamp, uh, right? It's, it's, it's whatever's going on behind the scenes is trying to kind of control things or has a grip on us in our own lives, not just out in the world. So what is going to fix that is going to be the shift with relationships and critical relationships and unions and diplomacy and partnerships and, and teams that are coming together that are saying like, screw this, like we're not doing this anymore. And once again, you know, Venus is the focal point of the quincunx here. Uh, we also have there, I think there was another one. I had an, another one that was written down, but maybe I'm not seeing it now. Uh, where is it? It's going to drive me crazy. No, I think that's it. I think that's the only one that I'm seeing. There's nothing over here yet. All right, um, now we're on the 22nd, so this is Sunday. So the moon will move into Gemini, and that'll be after you see all these 29s at like the crack of dawn. So something big is happening. 
So Venus is in a yod. Uh, oh, it's with Neptune and the moon. There we go. So we've got Uranus and Neptune and Venus and the moon and Neptune and Venus. I guess technically it's the same thing, right? Uh, then we're going to see the moon will enter into Gemini. Okay, so that's going to happen first thing in the morning. And then we're going to see the sun enter into Libra. So uh, Sunday will be the equinox. And that is where we see balance between the light and the dark, recalibrating those scales. I'm looking for the very minute that the sun enters into Libra. Sorry, bear with me for a second. Uh, when's that going to happen? There we go. So the minute that that moves in, looks like it's going to be first thing in the morning on the 22nd. And what's cool, so this is the chart that I was talking about. Astrologers will look at the, uh, the solstice or the equinox chart. I don't ever put the ascendant on there because you guys are going to be in different places and it may not apply. So I just use it off of the Aries rising. But moon in Gemini, trine the sun in Libra. Off the bat, if you guys remember, I said sweet and salty aspects, a little bittersweet. That's pretty nice. We see something about our emotional tendencies for the next three months to communicate, learn, travel, share in harmony with relationships and partnerships. So that means that if we're able to communicate, we're able to consider other people's perspectives, Gemini's duality, uh, and consider you know, um, other emotional paths, other ways of being able to relate to people emotionally, anything is possible. Um, we can improve relationships. We can improve relationships with neighbors. We can communicate with our communities. We can have better relationships with our siblings and our extended family. And it's an out of element trine, right? Because damn Pluto is back in Capricorn, but this is still a trine. Sun trine Pluto, Pluto trine the moon, sun trine the moon. Really great. You just can't quite spot it because it's in an earth element, but um, that's very powerful for major transformations of our, yeah, our, our status, our reputations out in the world and making some significant changes revolving around how we communicate and express our power. And that can be at work, with our relationships, with our partners, with our friends, whatever. So I like that aspect. Um, that makes me very happy. However, um, I'm not wild about the fact that Venus is at 29 degrees of Libra. You know, it's been my experience. I've been reading charts for a long, I mean, I've been practicing astrology professionally for like 10 years and I've been reading astrology for like 20 years, which is crazy because I'm not that old yet. But um, without a doubt, one of my signature, I guess, uh, perspectives, or I, I guess I should say, what is the word that I'm looking for? One of my theories um, is 29 degrees of Libra. When I have seen that in natal charts, progress charts, when I have seen that in return charts, 29 of Libra, especially when it's in aspect to Pluto or, or Uranus, for me has always been seen as like a shakeup, like a major change in a relationship, a separation, a divorce, a breakup, a shock, a surprise, you know? And uh, 29 degrees does kind of correlate with divorce because it's that tipping point. So I'm looking at the ruler of this particular day, equinox, Venus, love, diplomacy, money, balance, in a square to Pluto. So this is why I said all is fair in love and war. Although love can conquer war, Venus is in a superior position in Pluto. The right relationships can take on the biggest crisis. Uh, some of people might, throughout this next three months, really realize how much they value their partners, how much they love the person they're with how much they want um, intimacy, romance, commitment, connection, how much they would like to be able to build with another person and that they're ready to overcome the habits and patterns that have kept them blocked from relationships, right? Um, but yeah, it can be a turning point for some relationships with that 29 degrees of Libra. So this square is an interesting one because whenever we see Venus and Pluto square, there's going to be relationship challenges, power struggles, and it's important to use diplomacy to overcome standing issues. It is possible to do that. But I think back to like spring of 2023, we had a 29 degree Aries eclipse. You guys remember that? And that eclipse was in Aries at 29 degrees and it was squaring Pluto. So this is bringing up some of that same square where maybe it was kind of like that was more individual. Now this is more kind of like partnership related. It involves other people. You know, the square, like I said, it brings tension. It's a 90 degree angle. So there is a challenge and a need for action. We saw it earlier in the week with Mars square the nodes. So there was some tension that was kind of brewing. This time around, it's a little different because Venus and Pluto is a conflict between personal values, relationships, and deeper often sometimes hidden 
forces that kind of come up, secrets in relationships or uh, you know, things that people are feeling very deeply, but they may not be very open about it. And then it kind of comes to the surface of a relationship. So what do we see with Venus square Pluto? I mean, power dynamics and relationships are a big one. You know, this will act, this, this aspect will highlight power struggles. And um, sometimes there's an intense need to assert your will or desires, kind of like against the backdrop of what's being considered fair or balanced, right? Venus in Libra. So it can manifest a situation where we're having to confront manipulative or controlling behaviors of other people. And we're like, I'm not doing this. You know, this isn't working. This isn't, this doesn't feel good. We do transform our values in some way. Um, you know, Venus square Pluto is about, you know, reevaluating our sense of beauty, justice, love through intense experiences. And um, also it will challenge our personal beliefs or boundaries in some way. Uh, relationships might undergo, like I said, significant changes. There can be crisis with this aspect. There could be a deep emotional transformation where past patterns are broken and it could actually lead to either the end of a relationship or rebirth of something much deeper and much more authentic in connection. And um, out in the world in terms of like society, you know, Pluto and Capricorn, I think this aspect is relating to how societal structures and personal ambitions are really an, in a clash with our ideals of, of fairness and harmony. And it could indicate a time where our career or public, you know, demands um, are really compromising our personal values or compromising our relationships or our social standings. That's a big one there. And then um, obviously, you know, Pluto transits requires some real, you know, deep psychological work. And it can bring to the surface subconscious desires or fears about love or power or control or money, you know, and it's urging us basically to confront and integrate these things into our life so we can have a little bit more balance and self-understanding. Um, Venus square Pluto is definitely a time where I do see more issues with people um, having some pretty brutal things happen in relationships. You know, I don't like talking about this stuff, but like with Mars and Cancer and Pluto square, you know, Venus, we're, we're going to see the ugly side, I think, of some relationships. And we, we can see some people that can be kind of flying off the handlebars and stuff. And, and women need to be especially careful during these transits. Venus square Pluto transits, especially when you're going out, you're at night, you're by yourself, things like that. You need to be really careful because there, Pluto does deal with crime. So there can be um, a tendency to be more prone to being victims of crime if you're in the wrong place at the wrong time. If you're aware of it and you know and you're going out and you're parking in safe places and you're you know, staying with groups of people, you're going to be fine. But that energy is out there. Just be aware of that. I think from an evolutionary standpoint, you know, squares to Pluto for me have always materialized as like crisis being a catalyst for change. So a crisis that could be happening in a relationship being a, a, a catalyst for changes in your, you know, public status or changes in your career or, you know, finally confronting a boss or a, support, a, a superior or an authority figure. That, that can be one way of dealing with it and growing through that experience and realizing that you don't have to compromise your integrity um, in order to, you know, be able to, uh, you know, navigate uh, relationships or, you know, your career a certain way. We do learn through squares also how to integrate um, opposites. So this can be about the beauty and the harmony of Venus with the raw transformative power of Pluto. And I think it's finding a way to balance our personal desires with collective or uh, structural changes. Um, endings and beginnings, very Pluto, right? Thankfully Pluto's almost done. We're gonna have him here only for like another like six to seven weeks. Uh, but given that 29 degree placement, I think it's signifying an end of a cycle and how one relates to power and beauty and paving the way for new beginnings and incorporating these lessons. Um, and just watch for just the, the rawness of this transit because I think relationships either deepen to like unprecedented levels under this transit or they just dissolve because they cannot, with, they cannot withstand what needs to change or like the, the necessary transformative energy. So the goal is to reach a level of connection that's both profound and respectful of um, each other's individual uh, power, which I think is so appropriate with the North Node being in Aries. And then finally, this is the finale. <laughs> I know it's quite a week. Uh, then we're going to see Venus right when it comes out of that square to Pluto. Venus goes into Scorpio, which is the, the most, and you guys have heard me kind of rap on this, the most beautiful setup. You know, you see something at 29 degrees of Libra and then it goes into Scorpio and it's coming out of a square with Pluto and it's like, okay, here's the change, you know. So Venus obviously is a bit debilitated when it goes through Scorpio because this is kind of like Hades realm. 
Um, so obviously, you know, Scorpio sun, moon risings, uh, Venus and Scorpio placements, you guys are going to love it because it's kind of your time. So it can definitely be really good for shifts in regards to aesthetics, beauty relationships for you. Um, but generally it's not the easiest transit for the rest of the world. Although there will be some support, you know, Venus is going to, is going to try and Saturn and Mars and Neptune throughout this. So there's going to be some good stuff that's going to happen actually for the most part. Um, you know, when Venus enters Scorpio, we're putting Venus, the planet of love into a house or a sign that is dealing with death, sex, taboo, transformative, you know, the darker side of relationships. So in general, during this uh, several week period, it can be a little bit more challenging for relationships. But I think that it's just saying, regardless of what happens with some of the squares to Pluto, this is the setup for that change. So we're embracing depth when Venus is in Scorpio. This is about um, the depth of our emotions, our desires. You know, it's time to explore like what lies beneath the surface in relationships and within ourselves. And this is about growth and transformation. So it's playing off of that Pluto square. Uh, Scorpio for me is also about kind of confronting the shadows. So it might be about bringing light to a situation where there's been some shadow elements going on in love, money, relationships. And now we have the opportunity to confront and integrate these shadows leading to a more kind of holistic understanding of love and we're able to transform things. Um, it is about commitment and trust. This is a Venus sign that is very much focused on that, very devoted. So usually when we see this Venus transit through Scorpio, there's more potential for deeper commitments and reassessment of trust in relationships, which some of you guys will really like this, this go around. Trines to Mars and trying to Saturn, I think are gonna be very emotional, very sensual, but it's gonna be um, a, a decent transit. So, you know, some of us might be reassessing the trust in relationships um, and maybe pushing us towards making significant decisions about, you know, who we wanna share our lives with or who we are on like a soul level. And you can't go through a Scorpio transit without there being some kind of transformation, which ultimately leads to healing. So on a spiritual level, this transit is about healing old wounds relating to love and trust and betrayal. So it's about transforming pain into wisdom and understanding that love's depth requires navigating through, I think, sometimes darker waters, which we're definitely going to see during this transit. I'm going to be covering that for you guys uh, actually next Sunday because it's happening on Sunday. So we'll do Venus through the 12 signs. You guys will get that next week. All right. So with that being said, um, let me take you through the 12 signs. And I just want to do a recap and show you guys where this Mars square is taking place. So you're feeling it 15th, 16th, 17th. Um, as a reminder, I'm a Western astrologer, so I practice Western astrology, not Vedic. People always ask me that. And uh, to make the most of my readings, you want to listen to your rising, your sun, and your moon sign. And here's like a little bit of advice, guys. I would listen to all three, um, especially for the eclipse stuff that's going on. So if you go and listen to your eclipse predictions, go and listen definitely to your rising sign always, because that's going to tell you where it's going to happen. But listen to your sun and your moon, especially your moon sign. It's a lunar eclipse. But this as well, um, I want you guys to listen to your moon sign, okay? So listen to your moon sign if you usually don't do that. Why? Well, Mars is in a sign associated with the moon and it is squaring the nodes of the moon. <laughs> so uh, once again, you guys are gonna be feeling this 15th, 16th, 17th. This is that Mars square, the nodes transit. Um, and I wanna give you guys a little bit of insight as to what to watch for. Uh, Aries rising, Scorpio rising, Cancer rising, and anybody who has cancer placements, five, six, seven degrees of cancer, you guys are going to be feeling this the most. All right, so for my Aries and Aries rising, you have Mars square the north and south node. Mars is your chart ruler. Mars in the fourth house is really uh, bringing all of your attention to immediate actions or emotions revolving around home, family, and living situation, okay? Mars rules your first house of self and your eighth house of change. So this might mean that you feel like you just instinctually are like, I got to go home. I got to visit family. You know, I got to see my parents. I got to rearrange the furniture. I got to find a new place to move, you know, that kind of stuff. And taking action in regards to the home. Can there be some tension and conflict in the home? Yes, there can. But there doesn't have to be. And I think what you're going to notice over the next couple of days is with some of these squares and also some of the 7th, the 10th house squares, it's going to be about 
whose responsibility is what at home, what are you guys taking care of, what needs to be done, uh, what your goals or what your initiative is when it comes to home or living situation or family, okay? Let me know how that one goes for you guys. I think some of you guys might like sporadically, you know, go home or, or travel or move. We've got Taurus and Taurus rising. You guys will experience Mars square the north and south node. Mars is moving through your third house and your third house is uh, taking action or immediate emotions revolving around third house things like driving, writing, learning, speaking, siblings, neighbors. And Mars rules your 12th house of the subconscious and your seventh house of others. Taurus, watch your mouth. Careful what you say. There can be some things that can be said that can be hard to take back. There could be some stuff that you've been sitting on and thinking about that you just want to say to your, you know, to your partner or your spouse or things that you just want to say to your sibling or to your neighbors. And it might be something you've been kind of sitting on and then all of a sudden it just, ah, you know, comes out of your mouth. Um, be careful driving. Be mindful of that. Um, there can be, you know, important phone calls or exchanges that you're having with sibling as well. If you feel the impulse to travel, get in the car, go somewhere, plan a trip, start writing something, you know, that, that kind of makes sense as well. Good luck. We have Gemini and Gemini rising. You guys are going to be experiencing Mars in Cancer, square the north and the south node. Uh, Mars moving through your second house. You're feeling like taking action or immediate emotions are coming up, revolving around your finances, your self-esteem, or your purchasing power. Um, Mars rules your 11th house of goals and friends and your sixth house of habits, daily work, and routine. So you may decide that you're suddenly getting in touch with what your goals are for your finances. You're feeling incentivized. Maybe you're working with a friend. Maybe you've got somebody who's giving you, you know, some kind of direction when it comes on to managing your, your finances. Maybe you're investing more money in fitness, health, or wellness, or anything revolving around making changes uh, when it comes to your health and meeting some of your health goals. There can be some really significant money stuff happening here. And that could be an expense that comes up that you have to spend on suddenly. That could mean that there is some significant change or cut that's happening to your resources. Or suddenly you feel uh, like impulsively you have to buy something. That can also kind of come up with this transit. Good luck. We've got Cancer and Cancer Rising. You have Mars in your sign, square the north and south node. <laughs> Cue the, the meme with the crab with the, with the knife. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely you. Um, you got Mars in your first house, which is strong, and uh, it's going to be squaring your 10th and your fourth house. So, you know, this is taking immediate action or feeling some kind of immediate um, emotions revolving around yourself, your goals, what you're wanting to do with your life, your morning routines, what you're creating. I really recommend my Cancers and Cancers Risings being active. Either do some laps in a pool. Do some uh, like rowing machine exercises, you know, go for a brisk walk or a jog. Do something when you wake up in the morning to blow off some steam, right? Because Mars in this part of the chart, it can make you a little more aggressive or a little bit more temperamental, triggered. <laughs> and the square to the fourth house is bringing up tension revolving around home and family and living situation and the 10th house is like career movement. So you kind of feel like you're caught between a rock and a hard place where you're like, I just want things to change. I just want to move or I just want to, you know, break out of like a, a work situation. So you can be a little bit more temperamental at work with bosses and you might be feeling more predisposed to quit or start something. And you're also feeling a little bit more temperamental when it comes to your home or your living situation. But Mars rules your fifth and your 10th. So you might feel like, you know what, I'm starting my own business or I'm doing something creative. So it doesn't have to be negative. You can also be feeling a little bit more passionate or romantic than usual with some of these aspects as well. Good luck, Cancer. We've got Leo and Leo rising. You'll be experiencing Mars transiting through Cancer in your 12th square, the north and the south node in your third and your ninth house. Mars in the 12th house is a little funky. Um, you know, this is about being behind the scenes. So taking action, immediate, you know, emotions coming up, revolving around your spiritual or emotional self, working behind the scenes, uh, foreign travel, 
It could also be about, you know, spending more time visiting with family or, you know, working on things in your home and kind of keeping to yourself because Mars rules your fourth house and your ninth. So you might be visiting a foreign land or visiting family in another place, or maybe you are anticipating, you know, kind of wrapping something up with a home or a living situation. And, you know, the 12th house is like, I got to go through the attic. I got to go through the closets. You know, I got to clear stuff out because something's changing and I might be moving. Um, this is also subconscious. So you can notice that, you know, you are having trouble sleeping or there can be some anxiousness that could be coming up at night. Um, and my advice is with Mars in the 12th house is, uh, dance, you know, dancing can help kind of calm yourself down, believe it or not. You guys might also do well with like, um, having like projectors in your bedroom, like, you know, like those star projectors and stuff that'll calm you down. Lights and changes with light sometimes in the 12th house with Mars there is good. Some of you guys who are predisposed to smoking are going to crave smoking with Mars in the 12th house because it's something that helps you unwind. I'm not saying you should, but you'll notice that. Um, and there can be also just dealing with pent up frustration that you have not dealt with, or maybe you feel like you're biting your tongue a little bit more here. And the squares to the third and the ninth is recognizing that something's coming to a completion or an end and you're trying to figure out, you know, how to actually process that, right? Can be good for uh, hot yoga and, you know, spending time in spas or working out in a private gym. Like that's actually really good with Mars in the 12th house. Good luck. We've got Virgo and Virgo rising. You're experiencing Mars transit your 11th house in Cancer. Square the nodes in your second and eighth house. Um, so this is taking immediate action or emotions coming up revolving around your friends, socializing networks, or even some of your, uh, some of your kind of connections. Um, like socially, it can be about clubs and other associations that you belong to. Mars rules the third house of communication and the eighth house of change and transformation. So there can be with the Mars transit, certainly like a need to say, you know what, I'm going to call a friend. I'm going to talk to them about something I've got going on or something I'm dealing with or that I'm going through. There can be a conflict or a fight that can happen with a friend. So watch for that or some conflict over, you know, text message or email. Um, and it can be like digging up some emotions or some feelings revolving around uh, change and transformation because it's connected to the eighth house. Um, friends pushing you to travel, communicate, like reconnect or feeling this incentive to jump into or join some kind of group or association or kind of networking opportunity. Um, for the most part though, you know, cancer is a friendly sign with you. So I don't really see it being uh, challenging. I think it's going to be productive for the most part, but having to kind of connect with other people for some reason. And because the eighth house is involved, it might be like working for a new company, you know, putting a resume on a app online and like letting other people see it. Something that's going to kind of change or improve something about your finances can come up here. Good luck. All right. We got Libra and Libra rising. Um, Libra, you're going to experience cancer going through Mars going through cancer in your 10th house. Um, and for all the cardinal signs, okay, so we already talked to Aries, Cancer knows how it goes, but uh, Libra and Capricorn, you're going to feel the squeeze as well. So Mars going through your 10th house, Libra, square the south node in your sign and the north node in your 7th house. So this materializes as, you know, taking, I think, a little bit more um, initiative when it comes to your career, your professional life, your reputation, right? So um, obviously taking action or emotions coming up revolving around your career, your identity, um, you can have some tension that can come up with bosses or superiors or parents. There can be some conflict that can come up there. Mars rules your second house of money and your seventh house of relationships and others. So Libra, now is not the time to like go and ask your boss for a raise. <laughs> you know, it's just not. Now is not the time to get into a squabble with a business partner or with a client, although it can happen, it can come about. Um, now may be a time where there's something changing or you're leaping into something new in regards to like your relationships or your, your public status. So some Libra, Libra Risings are like suddenly in a much more committed relationship or maybe they're talking about getting married or there's some kind of shift that's happening there. Um, but it does make you very competitive at work and it does make you very bold about, you know, being seen and you can be more emotionally kind of invested or involved in some of the work that you're doing. Okay. 
Also a lot of drive to make money, right? Mars being the ruler of the second and the seventh. I feel like your time is better spent, especially if you have your own business or if you have a, a clientele or maybe you offer services or products, this is the time to like show people, look at what I've got. Uh, rather than feeling like you need to be arguing why you should be getting more, it's just put out what you've got out there. Let people see what you're doing. Good luck, Libra. All right, we got Scorpio and Scorpio rising. What's up, Scorpio? You're gonna be experiencing Mars in Cancer in your ninth house square, the north and the south node. Um, so Mars rules your chart. So if Mars is in the ninth house, that means you're doing ninth house things. So um, taking action, you know, immediate emotions revolving around traveling, learning, your beliefs. Um, ninth house can involve airplanes and uh, traveling to places, going to college, uh, certifications, training of some sort. And Mars doesn't just rule your first house, it also rules your sixth. So Scorpio and Scorpio Risings, it looks like it's about developing new skills that are gonna be beneficial for you when it comes to, yeah, growth, travel, philosophy, education, you know, a significant mentor or teacher can kind of show up into your life during this transit. That is possible. And some of you guys might be traveling or you're, you're planning some travel or you're planning to apply for college or you're going to start writing your book, right? Something like that can start happening where you feel this call to share something about your philosophy or your higher mind with other people. And this is just starting it, right? It's just initiating it now. Good luck. We've got Sag and Sag rising. You'll be experiencing Mars in Cancer in your natal eighth house, square the north and the south node in your fifth and in your 11th. All right, Sag. So um, thankfully, you know, Mars is in a house where it does better than some of the other houses. So when Mars goes through the eighth house, it wants to purge, transform, regenerate. It is about joint resources and developing more support, whether that's psychological, you know, physical, financial, intimacy, whatever. So when Mars goes through the eighth house, this is about taking action and immediate emotions revolving around joint resources, transformation, and psychological things. So in my opinion, um, you know, the square between these two placements seem to kind of indicate that change is the name of the game, right? And it looks like when this is happening, uh, when we experience the square, it's actually happening with moon trine Jupiter. So that means communicating and talking to partners about the necessary changes that need to happen in terms of resources, home, and family dynamics. Can there be a death or a change with this transit? Yes, touch wood. Um, but it, not all deaths are physical. Right. And so I'm also thinking about the eclipse in your fourth house where I'm like, well, there's a big change on the home front, you know, whether it's like, you know, taking out a mortgage, getting a bigger place, renovating your place, moving, you know, letting go of an old place, moving home with family. And obviously transformation is eighth house. You know, Mars can be reinforcing that. And then uh, cancer is home. So there's something going on here. Some of you guys might just rearrange furniture. Some of you guys might move in with a partner. Some of you guys might say, well, the change is going to involve fifth house things like children. Um, or, you know, overcoming fear or phobias revolving around dating, relationships, intimacy, or childhood issues. And that's triggering some of the Mars stuff in your eighth house. Um, but definitely there is this feeling of needing to receive more from other people. That seems to be like a big shift. Good luck, Sag. We've got Capricorn and Capricorn rising. You're going to be experiencing Mars in Cancer in your natal seventh house squaring the north node in Aries in your fourth and the south node in Libra in your 10th. And if you happen to be Capricorn, so moon rising uh, five, six, seven degrees, oh my goodness, big turning point for you. Uh, Capricorn, you're the one sign that's gonna be experiencing a grand cardinal cross where there's pressure on all four points to make some significant changes and it's being brought on by the people who are coming into your seventh house, which could be Romantic relationships, partners, clients, therapists, an astrologer, or somebody who comes in that's kind of shaking you up and helping you create some kind of change. Now, seventh house brings the heat when Mars is there. It means that if you're single, suddenly somebody can show up and they're really interested in you and there's some connection. Obviously, Mars connects to the fourth house, so it can be people from the past. Granted, you'll have a, a, you'll have a retrograde there, so it can be people from the past coming back. 
or settling some unsettled squabbles with family and dealing with some family related issues. Um, you know, this can be, you know, relationship with a mother or the mother's family. This can be a grandparent. This can be your second child if you have kids. Um, but there could be some family drama that's kind of coming up. And because it's opposing you, it's kind of like you're going to go, why are people being so like moody? Like what's going on? You know, what's their deal? Or why are they trying to create strife with me? So um, if it's none of those things, for some of you guys, it'll be that somebody kind of comes in that you end up meeting and it can be a relationship that can start to take off rather quickly, uh, which is not necessarily a bad thing. But like I said, this will go retrograde in cancer. We're coming into the shadow here in the next couple of weeks. So a relationship could start very quickly and then you could be reevaluating it down the road. But um, this is about taking action and immediate actions and relationships and people who come into your life that are saying like, hi, I'm here, you know, do you want to work together? Or do you, you want to argue with me? And how that's changing the direction of where you've come from in the past and whether that's your emotional patterning, the home you were kind of raised in, whatever. Um, and also uh, your identity out in the world. And that may mean that some Capricorns and Capricorn Risings are kind of like, I'm not so focused on being seen as part of a relationship. I'm really kind of over other people's demanding tendencies or their kind of their um, selfishness sometimes with Mars in the seventh house and that you're like, I want my own space. I want it to be defined. You know, I don't want my mom telling me what to do or my partner telling me what to do anymore. And it can be a time where you're going to see other people are going to really kind of act out a little bit. So just be mindful that they're going to be, they're going to be kind of crabby, you know? Good luck. We've got Aquarius and Aquarius rising. Um, you're going to be experiencing Mars in Cancer, square the nodes in Libra and Aries in your third and ninth house. So um, Mars does well in the sixth house. This is where it has a lot of work to do or it feels like it needs to assist other people or service other people. Um, so you'll be taking immediate actions revolving around health, service, work. And uh, this is also going to be something to watch in regards to accidents or your health. Okay. Obviously touch wood. Um, but Mars rules the third house of the mind communication and also vehicles. And it's also connected to your 10th house of career responsibilities. So you may feel like you're having to speak up, take more responsibility for things, lead a team, manage a business, issue contracts, have meetings. Um, but this also for me makes me feel like Mars in the sixth house and it, and it will square at a six degree can be about health related mat matters and needing to kind of communicate with siblings about health commit co health related matters um, or family members that are going through some things um, you may also have to be working on something in your home so you may be like bringing people in to like fix stuff in your kitchen or fixing stuff in like bathrooms or where there's water or in like in a bedroom um, and so it may be prompting you to have to change a schedule or maybe you're like, I'm just going to travel for a little bit, have this worked on and come back. Um, that can happen. So there can be some slashes or cuts or changes to your schedule because of something that's being worked on at home here. Um, but yeah, health is important. You guys are going to be more prone to potentially seeing fevers, digestional issues, stuff like that with Mars in your sixth house. And if you're taking care of your health, because Mars is, you know, going to be trining stuff in your second, you're eating well, you're taking care of yourself, then you're going to be very busy, very productive. And you're going to feel like you're just having to constantly work to take care of someone or something in the sixth house. So in order to do that, it's about kind of communicating effectively and being very clear about what you can and cannot take on during this period. Good luck. And we have Pisces and Pisces rising who will be experiencing Mars transiting Cancer in your fifth house, squaring the north and south node in Libra and Aries in your second and eighth. A little bit more of a fun transit for you, Pisces. Um, you know, Mars going through the fifth house, taking action, revolving around creating romance, dating, children, joy. Pretty good transit. Uh, Mars rules your second house of investments as well as your, uh, your ninth house of learning and travel. So you'll be more willing to say, you know what, I'm going to spend money. I'm going to buy those tickets. I'm going to go somewhere. Or, um, you know, I am going to, you know, follow up on that person and maybe have a long distance relationship. 
Um, I am willing to spend, you know, more money on gambling or maybe on learning how to trade or invest in the market or, you know, art supplies, um, something, something of that nature that brings you joy. And thankfully, Mars is starting to come into, you know, trines with planets in your first house. Um, and I think the squares means that there is something significant heating up revolving around the action that you're taking around fifth house topics, romantic partners, children, creativity, that is meant to help you create, right? So like you have an eclipse on your ascendant and then you're gonna have Mars square the nodes in the fifth. A lot of you guys are gonna be like, oh, I'm pregnant. Or you're gonna be like, oh, I really, I don't wanna be alone anymore, boom. You know, I've met somebody and it's like a really strong romantic connection. And this is financial too, because the fifth house is where we take risks. The second house is the money we earn and the eighth house is the money that we invest or comes from other people. So. For some of you guys, it'll feel like big risk, big reward. And that could mean that you're investing in the market or a stock or you know some currency or something. Um, equally, it can mean that you're investing in some of your own creative talents and you're building a business or you're creating something or you're making art that you would then sell. I'm only gonna speculate here, but because Mars rules money and because Mars is in your fifth house in the sign of the moon, a lot of Pisces and Pisces risings would do very well investing in silver. And you'll thank me in about a year when Jupiter goes into your fifth house and you see how valuable that it is. Uh, not a financial advisor, but there's, there's definitely something here that makes me feel like some, some of you guys might be doing that. Um, but yeah, it's, it's more about romance and creativity and feeling like you're willing to expend a little bit more than usual in some of these departments and probably feeling a little bit like more creative and dreamy and romantic in the process, okay? So that's the week ahead. I'm sending you guys all lots of good vibes for uh, this eclipse season. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Hit that bell button below and you will have me throughout the entire month of September to kind of give you guys the insights and what's going on. I can't even believe next week is next week, but uh, we've got like two weeks in between the next eclipse. Um, in this next week, we're gonna talk all about uh, the next eclipse in, in Libra. We've got a, a horoscopes coming out. Um, we're going to talk about Venus and Scorpio happening next Sunday and you guys can catch me here on Friday. I'll be doing live readings on the channel, tarot readings. So make sure that you subscribe and check the community tab on Thursday or Friday. You'll see me post that. And then once it's posted, um, then you guys will be able to sign up for a reading and you can hang out with me on Friday night. So stay tuned for that information and for the dates and the times you guys will see it soon. Um, I hope you guys have a beautiful rest of your Sunday to all of my Sunday crew. Thank you guys for joining me and uh, no whammies for this eclipse, right? <laughs> all right. Well, I'll catch you guys all back here next time. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. You guys take care.